What's up guys, today we're watching Michael Booth's video analysis on my paddle stroke. You see some things I'm doing well, but also so quite a few things I can improve on my paddle stroke also. Now Michael Booth does provide this video analysis to all his athletes in his training program. So I highly encourage you guys to go check out that training program link down below to see how you can also get a video analysis done on your paddle stroke also. Now today I'm gonna share with you guys my personal video analysis done by Michael Booth on my paddle stroke to hopefully help you learn and avoid making the same mistakes that I'm making in my paddle stroke. And then with that being said, I also hope that by watching today's video analysis helps you understand just kind of what Michael Booth does and the information he provides you with the video analysis to help you decide whether it's something that you want done for yourself as well to help you become a better paddler. And now last but not least, before we dive into today's video analysis, we also remember that Michael Booth is not saying this is the one and only true way to paddle out there, as there are still plenty of other paddle forms and techniques that you can apply to your paddle form also. But at the same time, Michael Booth has seen a ton of success with this style of paddle stroke, so he's simply trying to provide me in this video the same types of tips and techniques that he has seen successful in his career and apply it to my stroke as well. So with that being said, without further ado, let's dive into today's video analysis and let's learn a thing or two. So we'll just watch it through to start with and then I've got uh, a few ideas um, as to how I think you can improve and, and how you can use your body a little bit more effectively to allow you to you know, get a more effective stroke, feel more powerful, go faster which is what everybody wants to see. So like the first thing I noticed with your stroke, if we're just watching it through is there's not a lot of leg movement. Like your legs are very fixed. You're, you know, pivoting from the hips and you're not allowing yourself to use that, that body weight a little bit more to get that power down on the stroke. So your legs are very fixed and you're not really pivoting down to allow yourself to fall into the stroke. You're really just sort of tapping through at the front, just basically just using your arms. So the things I like you to do, so if we just watch it from the front, the paddle's nice and vertical, which is great. The thing that I notice with your stroke, though, is that you're not going deep enough into the water. So there's two things here we'll go through. So what I'd like to see you do is see if we watch this through. We just go nice and slow. You're getting a bit of depth on your stroke. You're probably just getting the neck of the paddle in. What I'd like to see you do is get your paddle a little bit deeper than that. So maybe two or three inches more into the water. Now, my theory behind that is the deeper you get your paddle, the more hold you get on the water and the more projection you get from each stroke. Because ultimately what we're trying to do when we're paddling is get a better glide. Um, if you look at those elite paddlers, they're getting sort of that 3.2, 3.4 meters per stroke, um, depending on how high their stroke rate is, obviously. And then, you know, the intermediate paddlers are getting more like 2.4 to 2.6, which is quite a big distance. And they're getting that leverage from, you know, sinking the paddle and really projecting off the paddle. And they're using their body and their, their legs to do that. The other thing that I can notice here as well is right here. You can see how that your, um, your hand crosses your shoulder. So I like to teach that paddlers keep their, so this is the edge of your, Sorry, this is your shoulder here. So what I like to see is actually that top hand not cross across the body. So your top hand sort of should be more here and coming up and forward, not coming out to the side. So that's something you can practice on because what you'll notice is when you're releasing your paddle, you start actually doing a bit of a J stroke to get your paddle out of the water when you're dropping this hand out to the side like this. So what I'd like to see you do more of is actually bring the hand up and forward so basically you feel like you're lifting it up to the sky you cover it well you're feathering quite nicely already and then come through and set up don't be throwing your hand out to the side and doing that j stroke when you finish and you'll find that your tracking is a lot better and then on the paddle this probably is a good spot to put it i think you should try and get your paddle about to there and i'll show you how to do that in these next um, videos as to how to get to that point also, I'd like to see you um, see how far your hands are apart. Now, the general rule for me when I'm paddling is push my laptop away a little bit so I can show you what I'm doing. It's sort of like basically if, if your shot, um, elbows are at 90 degrees and you bring your hands in like one length, that's about where I want you to hold your paddle. It does look like your hands are more closer together. So try and hit that 90 degrees and then one hand width in. That's basically where you should be holding your paddle. Now, the reason for this is when you're paddling, you look like you're really up and tall and you're sort of like really pulling through your neck. 
I really want to see you bring those shoulders down and keep nice and controlled when you're paddling and stay nice open and not sort of lifting the shoulders up and really just paddling with the arms because you're not going to allow yourself to get that projection on the stroke if your arms are wide up and uh, your shoulders are nice and high. The other thing that you can notice just from this uh, image here, you can see how you kind of like crossing across your face. Try and think about keeping the shoulder down and not sort of pushing it forward like this. So you can really see here how I'm talking about you're sort of pushing, you're sort of pushing forward like this. So if I get a little bit more side on, what you'll see is you sort of you're sort of doing this when you're coming forward. What I need you to do is keep the shoulders back and actually project from there because you're going to be a lot more powerful if you're keeping your shoulders back and you know bringing them forward. That allows you to have that chain connection between your legs and your shoulders. If you are pushing your um, shoulders forward too far, you're not actually getting that transfer of power as well as you can. Like imagine if you're doing any form stuff in the gym, you never shoulders up and shoulders forward. You're always shoulders back, good posture. Um, that's sort of the foundation of basically all techniques in most sports. So something to think about there. Right, let's just go back a little bit. So I think otherwise, like your reach is okay. I would recommend having this top hand back maybe slightly more. So having the top hand more back to here. So you're getting a better angle of paddle without having to throw your shoulders forward. Because if you can imagine, even if your bottom hand stays the same place, see how much more reach you get just by having that top hand backwards a little bit from um, that front hand and also close to the head. I usually think about that thumbs up distance from your head is about far enough away, so about there is where you want your top hand, and then pushing down from there, not sort of out here, having to like sort of drive and forward as you're going through the stroke. So you can see here what I'm talking about, you're really driving that top hand from, basically from here all the way to here when you're starting your stroke. So what I'd like to see you do is actually drive that top hand down more and actually keep it in the same position because then if you think about where your paddle is going to be when you finish a stroke, your paddle is actually going to be from here. It's going to be more positive. So you're going to get more leverage out of the stroke and your paddle blade is actually going to be more vertical when you finish your stroke as well. You're not going to be like here where your blade's kind of lifting up. And the issue that I have with that, if you start paddling past your feet, especially you start to be pushing water up and it's also hard to release the paddle back into the stroke there. If you, and you have to start swinging you around like you're doing, um, I know you can paddle out pretty early um, and you bring it out basically where I think you should, but I would like you to see you um, have that bit, a bit better of a paddle angle. All right. So a bit of splash there, but not too bad. Um, so if you bring that, think about what you're doing with your top hand a little bit more um, and you're, instead of swinging that paddle around, which is creating that splash there, you're going to find it's a lot easier to come forward as well. That's the splash there is what I'm concerned about when you are, you know, turning the paddle out. That is you pushing on board the opposite way. So what I like to have when I'm paddling is, if, if you can imagine this is your foot here, I like to keep my weight nice and even between the ball of my foot and the heel of my foot. And then I like to bend my knees over the top of my toes and then shift my hips back more. Now, why I shift my hips back more is because I feel like it's a more stable foundation to paddle. I feel like especially when you're in unstable environments like at the start of races or in side wing conditions or when it's just messier in general, you're going to find that you're a lot more stable if you've got those hips back and you're down lower. Your center of gravity is going to be lower and you're taking more weight through the legs instead of just keeping your legs upright. Then from there, you can really pivot forward so you can have like a more upright stroke um, but still get the leverage and the depth of the stroke. So try and work on that. You can imagine it's like doing a deadlift. Um, or sitting down uh, onto a stool or onto a chair. You're sitting sort of back and you're keeping your weight nice and even. You're bending your knees and you're sitting back. That's sort of where I'm thinking when I'm paddling. And then from there, you're just coming up slightly. So it's basically from there to there, I would say it's a very small movement. Um, and it's more of like a squeeze, but you're coming, like you're coming back and you're standing up and you're finishing your stroke. Coming back, you're standing up and you're, pivoting, you're finishing your stroke. And then from there, you're really pivoting forward onto the stroke and you're putting the weight down that way. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that video analysis on my personal paddle stroke and seeing all my mistakes and failures. But hopefully with that and all the advice that Michael Booth provided me, 
Hopefully you learned a thing or two as well to apply to your paddle stroke to help you become a better paddler also. So that's all I have for you guys today though. And like I said at the beginning of this video, if you're interested in having Michael Booth do a video analysis on your paddle stroke, be sure to check out that program link down below. I'll catch you guys in the next video.